So today I was taking care of my plant during Sabbath. Because of the name of the plant, I'll put a picture up of what it's called. You just won't believe me. I, I'm going to do another video where I actually show it. I'm trying to bring it back to life. I call it Jonah. And it's my only plant. I have another one, but it's easy to take care of. It's a hibiscus. Uh, but anyhow, as I was taking care of it, I was really reflecting on Hebrew roots. So Hebrew roots is interesting because they can be a little disingenuous, a little bit, depending on the sect that you find. You know, there's the black Hebrew Israelites. They're kind of Hebrew roots. Uh, they're put in that category. And then you get uh, all the way over into kind of a lighter version. And I would not say that I'm Hebrew roots, even though I do honor the Sabbath, or at least I try to. I don't think I honor the Sabbath as much as I could or should. But... Um, I do agree with on some level that there's a version of Christianity that has spun into something that takes away our ability to testify to the truth of Jesus Christ to the orig original people. Christianity is Santa Claus and Easter bunnies and the people who are practicing Christianity don't even understand what Easter is and what it's for and what it represents. They don't understand Passover. You know, Passover is a secondary thing to candy, Easter bunnies and whatever. Um, Christmas too, but Santa Claus. This doesn't doesn't speak to the original tribe. So I do get why we would want to go back to our roots on some level, but I'm noticing the destruction, the kind of the rotting at the root, a little bit like my plant. Something's wrong with my plant. I don't know what's going on. They don't like Paul at all. Um, and, and, you know, that's speaking against the Holy Spirit. Like, Paul definitely had the Holy Spirit. And even Peter said that there are things that Paul said that were hard to understand. And that's because Paul was a Pharisee. So when he spoke, he kind of spoke as an expert in a field he was just moving and like gracefully in whereas all these other guys were fishermen. They weren't from an educated family. Like, Paul grew up in a line of Pharisees. Like, this is what he, he was bred and born to do. So all the other thing the Hebrew roots don't really understand, which I'm, I was researching a bit was simple things like the kippah. Um, that is a Talmud thing. It's a rabbinic tradition after Christ. So if you're going to be a Jewish person, which is kind of what Hebrew roots is, it's Christians who decide to go back to Jewish tradition, but instead they kind of put on a caricature of Judaism, meaning that they kind of see it for what it is now, not realizing that it's evolved and changed. And I, I dare say there are two different types. There's one that's the rabbinic part of Judaism, and there's the, the uh, what, what Jesus was in at the time that he was alive. And you can kind of see it in even the um, menorahs. The menorah branches, depending on, I guess, which uh, sect of Judaism you're in, it's eight or nine branches. But really, according to the book of Exodus, which, by the way, in Israel, they actually do have a big menorah on display. And it's the right amount of um, branches. It's seven. Go back to the original. If it's not in the Old Testament, it doesn't matter. Same thing with the, um, the kippah. That is something that's from rabbinic Judaism, not from the original, something closer to what maybe the prophets would recognize or Jesus would recognize what he was growing up in. If you are trying to honor Christ, you want to live more like him, not what came after him. So to me, that's where I kind of get off the boat with Hebrew root. They also do it out of pride and they'll do things like start arguments about eating pork and eating shellfish like these are the two things you have to not eat in order to remain kosher. And they will say things like, that they're kosher. It's just not the case, not by the definition presented by real Judaism. So that's my beef. And um, with that, but I do understand it's like <clears throat> a spectrum, you know, where they're far over here on the left when I feel like they, there's a point though. There's a good point. They're, they're making a point. Jewish people coming into knowing Jesus Christ don't have to change anything. They just keep being and doing what they do. They just do it in the name of Jesus now. The goal is not treating religion for religion's sake, but knowing there is a God that will look at you and ask you and say, because you will be dead at that point, right? You're going to have a final judgment. To enter heaven, you're going to look at him and see his face because you are dead. You cannot see God and live. So when you do see him, you won't be alive in the same sense that we're alive now. I mean, is he going to parse out which rabbi actually had the right commentary? Is he going to, what is he going to do? Is he like, oh, you know, common sense, you should have read this commentary. Or, you know, that part of the Talmud was wrong. Or 
I mean, there's already the laws alone. The 600 were enough, but now there's more. There's too many. I don't understand how you can stand before a living, breathing God and answer to all the commentaries. To what end are you following the law? It reminds me a lot of Les Mis, because Les Mis kind of puts it on display through application. So Jean Valjean was operating in grace, and Jovert was operating under the law. And you see how strict he was. Meanwhile, Jean Valjean was running around trying to be this person operating underneath grace. But I mean, it was messy and it wasn't straightforward and it wasn't something the law could cut out perfectly. And the law was chasing him down. But meanwhile, he was given disguise. He was given the opportunity to evade people. And he was given the grace, the time needed to do what he was put on this earth to do. Meanwhile, there's this guy who is totally preoccupied with getting him because the law says so. The law says so. It doesn't really make Javert a bad person, but I mean, to what end is the question. I, I watch him and go, to what, to what end, dude? Don't you see he's helping people? Don't you see he's doing his best? Don't you see he's trying? And you think in any other reality, these guys would be best friends, but because one is under grace and the other is under law, it's nearly impossible. This is Linda of Christ's King forever. May God be with you.